Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel, where I'm going to go into the details around a new feature that has recently been added to Fantasy Grounds Unity called Token Vision. This feature introduces the ability for Fantasy Grounds to provide in-map vision controls that work in conjunction with the line of sight functionality, further enhancing the overall playing experience when making use of various maps. However, in order for you to use this feature, you must be running Fantasy Grounds Unity 4.1 or higher, which was released in May of 2021 and is the version Token Vision was officially introduced with alongside Token Lighting. As there are two paths of learning in relation to manipulating Token Vision, I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part is going to be around how the DM handles Token Vision effects and what options they have in order to ensure the players get the best experience out of this feature. The other part will cover what options exist for players and how they will make use of token vision to alleviate some of their issues within a line of sight enabled map. This video, however, will not be covering anything around line of sight itself, except for a very cursory explanation of how it works, so that you can understand how both the line of sight and token vision features work together to control and manipulate what the players see on a map. So with that, let's get started with the DM's side of the feature. Much like the token lighting video that I've already recorded and provided a link to in the description below, we will need a map that has line of sight functionality already in place, simply to expedite the process for this video. For this tutorial, I will be making use of one of the maps out of the Lost Minds of Fandelver campaign. And specifically, the one that I will be using is Cragmaw Hideout, the player version of the map. So I'm going to pop that open. And everything is pretty much ready to go. The first thing I'm going to want to do, though, is enable the lighting option here. And you do that by just clicking on this icon over here on the right, and it turns it on and sets it up. But you'll notice that there's a little bit of a, a light effect already in place. That's the ambient lighting, and we're going to want to turn that off. But before we do that, we also want to make sure that we enable this player vision preview so that we can see exactly what it is that the player is going to see when we add tokens onto this map. So very briefly, line of sight functionality is enabled by this icon here. And what it does is it will show you where the blockers are when it comes to what players can see. So these red lines indicate walls. These green lines indicate terrain. There are other features that are available, but I like this map because there's very few of them in play, and it's relatively easy to showcase how the actual token vision and the token lighting functionality works. But where we want to go is the next icon over and that is the token lighting icon, or lighting, I should say. Before we continue, we want to disable ambient lighting, so we want to make sure that that is turned off. And once you do that, the entire map should go black. And before we can really showcase anything, we need to drop a player character into, into the map. So I'm going to drop one of those characters, and I'm going to drop a vampire into place. And the reason why I'm going to do that is when I actually select one of these characters, which for some reason, oh, that's right, because you have to be here. When you select one of these characters, you'll very quickly see what they can and cannot see. So I'm going to move this character over to here because I know, there we go. That's an area that is visible and accessible. So this person is outside of the wall, actually. <laughs> there we go. Hard to place when you can't see where they're going. <laughs> Probably should do that before you turn off the actual ambient lighting so you know where you're placing them. So by moving this vampire character around, who happens to have dark vision, we'll be able to see exactly what the area of the map looks like around this particular area. But when we select the cleric, who is a human, we see that there is no area that they can see. And that's because humans, by nature, don't have any ability to see in the dark. But this cleric is special. They happen to be a cleric of the Twilight Domain which means they actually have dark vision that's being granted to them by the class, specifically dark vision that has a distance or viewable range of 300 feet. And typically, the senses would be the location to where something like that would be placed. And in this particular case, the Twilight Cleric would gain a dark vision attribute, if you will, of 300 feet, and it can go right here in the senses field. And once we do that, we can see that they can see pretty much the entire area of the room that isn't blocked by some other form of object. And this field here is something that we should already be familiar with. And I just wanted to showcase that this is generally where it would go and that it does work in relation to the new functionality for token vision. 
at least it's utilizing the line of sight functionality to handle this for now. This isn't exactly what we want to cover. What we want to cover is how the DM is able to manipulate this functionality. So I'm going to remove that dark vision from our character. Once again, they can no longer see in the map, although you can barely make out the map behind the fog of war. This tells you that the human character actually can't see anything around them. Back in our lighting section, we want to go to this uh, fourth icon over called token vision. And this is where we can manipulate how players get to have token vision in place. So for example, if I were to set dark vision on this particular character again, right now it would be a 60 foot range. But the second I do that, we can now see that they can once again see in the room. But if you're not happy with the range that the character was given, we're approximately 240 feet short, you can use these vision range values to adjust the distance that that particular character can see by adjusting the near and the far distance as well as the fall off. Now, if you want to be able to adjust these ranges themselves, you have these options in this vision range category. You can adjust the near and the far, and what this does is it Near is for how far out they can see before it goes to dim light, and the far range references how, our, how far out that dim light goes before it completely falls off. And then this fall off is the feathering that occurs between the two boundaries, so specifically the near to far, and then from the far to completely blind. We can demonstrate this by adjusting these values. So if I reduce the far range to 5 and the fall off range to 10, watch what happens to the vampire you can now see that the human can no longer see that character. That's because that vampire is 15 feet away from the character. Well, technically 10 feet out from the boundaries, but 15 from center. If I move this character closer, now the vampire becomes visible again. They're once again 5 feet. So it just goes to show exactly how the near and the far ranges work. What about the fall off? Well, as I stated earlier, the fall off adjusts this blurring effect that you get around the boundaries. So if I set the fall off to one for the near border, you'll see that it now becomes a sharp edge as opposed to simply a fall off distance. Whereas if I set the fall off to the far range, we won't really see much because it's already sort of casting dim light here and the effect isn't going to be needed noticeably obvious. Now let's see if I can move this character to an area we haven't explored before and see what happens. So here you can see that the effect is a sharp border or bounding, if you will. That's how the far range works. And now that I think about it, you can actually just barely see a dark line here. That would be the feathering. So this would be dim light, this would be no light, this would be bright light is a good way to look at that. So I've gone ahead and reset this character's dark vision stats back to the default range. Now I want to point something out here. If someone were to cast a darkness spell, this toggle here would have to be on in order for that effect to ignore it. And you'll see that when we get to blind sight into true sight, which are the other two features. I don't have a darkness spell cast in place here. I suppose I could very quickly drop something into place. So let me drop a darkness spell on the vampire. Oops. Come on. It still has a little bit of finagling. There we go. So darkness is now in place. You'll see that the cleric can no longer see. But if I move that cleric out of the area, you'll see that they have the ability to see in the area around them again. So the darkness spell comes into play. If I temporarily toggle this ignore darkness toggle, they will essentially be able to see the entire map. That's not what we want. <laughs> and they weren't really seeing the entire map. They were just seeing 60 feet out from this particular location. So pretty much everywhere. So blind fighting works a little bit differently. Once again, you can set the preset by ensuring that your character is selected and select blind sight. And I think right now, the fact that Blindsight sees 60 feet out from the map in the whole map is a bit of a bug. I don't think it's honoring the line of sight functionality. That might not be the case. I'll double check with Smiteworks. But blind fighting style is one of the options where Blindsight would come into play. 
and you can simply adjust the range to be 10 foot for both the near and the far because they can't see anywhere outside of that 10 foot range and you'll see immediately that the vampire is gone now if i move the character once once again you gotta switch to that if i move the character to a point where they can now sense them then the vampire becomes visible so in some respects it is functioning but it isn't functioning when it comes to walls now you'll notice that i can't actually pass this character or push this character through the wall that's how line of sight is coming into play it's blocking and preventing that character from going through that particular square so no longer do you have to deal with the question of can i get into this part of the map well you can simply state to the character how far does your icon go when you try to move it into the wall now true sight is another effect that works very similar to blind sight with one exception you can now see as if you were outside in daylight within a darkened room you can also see through the darkness spell blind sight senses what's in the darkness spell it's technically not seeing through it because you're not using your eyes when you're using blind fighting or blind sight but both of them allow you to see through darkness they should not allow you to see through walls. So I think this is also a bug when it comes to this effect. And I will be sure to report that. But true, true sight works very similar to blind sight in the sense that you're able to see pretty much everything in the area. The exception being true sight allows you to see everything in the area as if you were outside. And you would be able to spot things like secret doors automatically. You would be able to spot hidden traps etc etc you can literally see everything that's what true sight gives you the ability to do unfortunately within fantasy grounds even though you have a character with true sight it doesn't necessarily automatically see the secret doors and secret rooms so the dm's going to have to be cognizant of that and go through and explain that but those are the three types of presets and if you want to remove an effect from a character you just have to make sure that they're selected and then you delete the effect i'm going to delete the darkness spell from our vampire yeah so there we go and as we can see from a dm's perspective this gives you quite a bit of control over the individual character's ability to see on the map and you can very quickly assign different types of vision to each character it's great for quickly applying effects from a spell or curse on mass or individually and that's the other thing you can do this while selecting multiple characters so if i move actually i don't even have to move i can just select all the characters on the map so I go to the effect, select all of the characters. So you will now have both of them selected. You can give them both true sight or uh, dark vision. So now they both have true sight. You can also remove the effect from both of them at the same time. So it's very convenient to be able to go ahead and very quickly adjust and modify characters. So if there's a spell that affects an area, like an effect that you've created, then you can very quickly select all the players, apply the effect, and you're done. And I really do love how this feature works when it comes to the DM, and it's going to help me out quite a bit. But there's still more to this particular feature because we can actually set it up so that as a DM, you shouldn't really have to do much unless you're applying effect that you yourself have hidden in the room or hidden on a map because of a trap or a spell that's sort of permeating in that particular area. By allowing the players themselves to use their own effects you will mitigate some of the workload that kind of gets added to you because of this feature but i'm going to cover that in the second video so please join me there and i hope you enjoyed this particular video and found it useful and informative for you i wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video i hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with fantasy grounds in general and that you had fun in the process if you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comment section. And I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.